All right, today we're gonna open up this black box. What's inside here? Here's a little hint. Razor blades. The box full of razor blades. Nope, this is the Razor Blade 17. The big boy with the RTX 3080 Ti. This is the early 2022 model. It's now August, so I'm gonna be annoyed if they come out with a mid-2022 model when I just bought this one, but hopefully they don't. All right, so it was shipped in a very nice package. This box was inside another box. Of course, we have starting to see a little familiar logo action, and then we have a little note saying design and engineered by Razer in California. And then in here, we have nice bubble packaging. Yet again, like all good things, it's a box within a box. So this box, one, is shockingly thin, and two, that's where all the good stuff is. So let's take a look. What's in the box? Now this is only my second Razer laptop, but there's something super cool about opening a Razer product. I mean, a lot of laptops are cool to open, right? ThinkPads are pretty boring. My Dell XPS was pretty cool. The Alienware was very cool, but both Razers I've had so far, I've seen something special better. It's all cardboard outside here, so it seems there's biodegradable airbags, very eco-friendly stuff, which is nice. Here is the Razer Beast. Some slots for the foot rails here. In here, a little Razer package. All cardboard, recyclable material. Thanks for choosing Razer. Nice little letter saying, congratulations, there is no turning back, which is funny, because it seems like just marketing nonsense, but I will say my first gaming laptop was a Razer Blade. I didn't quite love it, sent it back, tried a bunch of others, and here I am, right back to Razer. And I'm going all in on Razer, baby. I got all kinds of Razer products coming up. Got your stickers, of course, you gotta have that action. A little Razer Blade book. Some short directions here. Of course, a little microfiber cloth has the teeniest and tiniest Razer logo on it. It's a very tiny cloth, but you'll need it because Razer devices are fingerprint magnets. Now, the previous Razer blade I had was super fingerprinty. They're supposed to have a newer material now that is somewhat more resistant to fingerprints. We'll see how true that is. I think it will still get fingerprints, which is part of the reason I got this, which is a Razer blade skin, I like their version of a D brand that sticks on there, but I don't know how much of it in this video. We'll Probably make a separate video on that. All right, let me put all this back up. I'm gonna leave the microfiber out because I'll probably need that. And I can't get go back in there. Let's look in here. Very standard three-pronged port, power port, Razer power brick, which is very nice and small. I mean, this is a 280 watt power brick. So this is the Dell XPS 1930 watt power brick. And you can see there's not a huge difference in that in the Razer. I mean, the Razer obviously weighs more and it is bigger, of course, but Obviously you're getting 280 watts versus the 130. Alienware did revamp theirs for 2020. I have the Alienware X17R1, which came out originally in 2021. And it is an absolutely ridiculous power brick. It is bonkers how big it is compared to, I mean, it is a 330 watt, but it's bonkers how big it is compared to this guy. Part of what I was looking for in Razer, I have the Alienware X17R1, which has been pretty good. I mean, it's been excellent, really. But there's a few things about Alienware in general that I would like to change. Just the ecosystem as a whole, I think Razer is going to be better for my purposes. Put that in there, of course. And then, so, you know, you got a decent length in the Razer power cord, which I don't love. It's a weird, I mean, it's, it, it's Razer. It's how Razer does it. It's how they've done it for a while now. I think it works just fine as far as power ports go, but it's probably my least favorite proprietary connector. No one loves proprietary connectors in the first place, but... As far as they go, that one's my least favorite. There we go. So it is heavy. Woo! It's heavy. But not break your arm heavy. I mean, I'm super strong, but I mean, it's a nice weight. I've had worse, certainly. I've had heavier items. I've had lighter, of course. Interesting. There's a little piece of tape over the power port. Well, let's just go ahead and look at the ports on the, the right-hand side or left-hand side if you're facing it. Power port full-size ethernet port with the tab part on top. That was first pointing out, at least I saw on video, pointing out by Jared Steckens, right? If you want to unsnap it, that's the better orientation for it to do it. I plan on using a dock, so it doesn't really matter, but it's nice that's on there. Two USB-A ports with the Razer Green, which is very nice. A USB-C port, which I believe is Thunderbolt 4. Razer does not indicate the little lightning bolt, which is odd because every other version of Thunderbolt 4 I've seen does that, but Razer didn't do it in my last one and doesn't appear to do it here either. So well, that's all right. And then here is a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone combo jack, which I still would like it closer to the front, but it's a better position than Dell does. Dell puts it all the way in the back, which is, you know, if you're wearing headphones, you're gonna be 
facing this way, so the microphone port should be closer to the front, right? On the other side, here's where everything gets super excellent. Full size SD card slot and a high speed one at that. So just about every other gaming monitor, not all of them necessarily, but the ones I've used, Alienware X17, both just had a micro SD card slot. Even the LG Gram 17 that I had only had a micro SD card slot. Whereas the Dell XPS 9710 that I have, the 9700, my previous Razer Blade, the ThinkPad, and Dell 7760 Precision Laptop, they all had SD card slots. Obviously, I'm making a video. SD card slot is way better than micro SD card slot. Even if you were using micro SD cards, you can just use, you know, an adapter like this, and it goes right in there. So you don't have that problem. If you have a micro, you can't use a full size. In case you're wondering, the disc goes almost all the way in and is spring loaded, which I like. I will say, I do like the spring loaded better, but you can easily accidentally knock it out with it spring loaded. If like my Dell XPS 9710, it just slides in there and it doesn't spring out. So I yeah. am. Full size SD card slot. I'll put the specific stats there. Thunderbolt 4, another USB-A and an HDMI 2.1 port. So you can get high speed, high refresh rates. Nothing on the back. The front has a nice little lip or a little indent to put your finger in there to open the lid, which is nice. On the bottom, we have three fans and some big feet, of course, to provide a little bit of airflow underneath it. So that's how much is off the surface, but still remaining small and slender. So on top, of course, is the Razer logo. I do wish this was just clear glass and it would light up green, but instead it's just green and it lights up, but it's just green. Time for the big moment of truth. Truth. <laughs> truth. Open it up. Of course, there's a little protector here for keyboard, which is nice. So up top, we have 144 hertz, 17.3 inch ultra high depth screen. So the 4K, 30, 80, 40, 2160. It says it's a new 4K display. I don't know. But it says 100% DCI P3 coverage. And then over here, GeForce RTX 3080 Ti, the laptop GU at 16 gigs of DDR6 VRAM. This has the 12th gen i9-12900H processor with 14 cores and 20 threads up to five gigahertz. So it should be quite the powerhouse, which I like. So I started off trying to replace a desktop with a laptop and the Razer was my first choice. And then I cycled through, then I tried desktop again, but I like living on a laptop. The Alienware X17 R1 has taught me it is capable of being a desktop replacement. This Razer should be most likely more powerful than my old Alienware, so it should run everything perfectly fine. On the bottom here, we have a THX sticker and Intel Core i9 sticker. I hate those stickers, I'm gonna take them off. They're very ugly. Last time I had one of these, it left a bunch of residue, which is super annoying. So THX does not, no residue, very nice. Now, this Core i9 sticker, I bet it does leave residue. Yeah, that does not want to come off. But, no way, look at that. Okay, I eat my words. So that's an improvement right off the bat, right? My last video with the Razer, it had all kinds of gunk there. And I was super annoyed that my brand new laptop was all gunked up. And now it doesn't, right? So let's take a look at the keyboard. This is another improvement from the previous Razer Blade I had. So the keys are larger, not a ton, but they are. And my brother-in-law has a Razer Blade, same generation. And I tacked on it and I do notice ever so slightly different, which is nice. Well, that's nice. Another change, they used to have a power button in the speaker grill, and now it's here, and it has a nice large trackpad, which actually indents. You can push on it, it's not a piece of glass, it's not haptic feedback, it's for all I've seen so far, it should be a very nice trackpad. You can tell it's a matte finish, you can sort of see my reflection, I got bright lights here, of course, but it is pretty much a matte finish, so you don't get that terrible glare or well, a nice green light up. I like it. So there's, this, you press F12 for boot menu. There's a little light that comes on here that lets you know it's active and doing stuff. That's a bright screen, which is good. Standard Windows boot up, right? United States is where I am. When Mash IT makes videos, I always notice that his inner button's all weird. I don't like that. This is the way it should be. Let's go ahead and connect. This will be my first test on the keyboard. I absolutely hated the previous keyboard, but my tastes have changed and my level of typing on directly on the laptop has changed as my workflow has changed. So I don't type as much on the laptop itself anymore. But 
that first experience was pretty good. Sometimes it's hard to judge from the initial typing experience. It's messing up the colors on my camera since it's so bright. I mean, it has a shockingly bright screen. I don't know what the nits are necessarily. Let's name your device. No spaces. We're just going to call it Razer Blade 17. Interesting enough, my last device was called the Razer Blade Pro 17, and now they've changed their naming language to get rid of that Pro moniker, which I find odd, really, because the Razer Blade is, I think, very suited for a content creator. Oh, and so it does have Windows Hello, which I like. All right, we'll check for some updates. All right, and if we go to Settings, System, and then we go to About. It's a Razer Blade 17. It's 12th gen Intel Core i9, 2.5 gigahertz, 64-bit OS. So it is Windows 11 Home, so not Pro. All right, let me poke around with it for a little bit and we'll check them out. All right, so here is my backpack that I've used for many years. This is Winger brand, but if you want to see, obviously the Razer Blade will fit fine in there, right? You can see it sticks out a little bit, but it's plenty of room clearing the zipper. And this is, you know, just a normal regular person backpack. It's not a gaming specific backpack or not a razor specific backpack. So it's just fine. No qualms. I could put the cords in there, plenty of room. So, you know, the razor blade, while it is 17 inches, it's not as quite as big as some other laptops like the Alienware X17 I have is much larger. So it's pretty good there. All right, so here is the Alienware X17 R1. And this is the Dell XPS. 9710. So this is the 2021 laptops with the 2022 laptop. I would assume most likely competition would be here unless you want the more professional look than the Dell could also be in the ballpark. But a little size comparison. Right off the bat, the X17 is way bigger. X17 is probably the biggest laptop I've ever used. That's a big boy. Even though they're both 17 inch screens. But if you look at the Razer versus the Dell, the Razer is bigger but the Razer is a 16 by nine screen and this is a 16 by 10 screen on the Dell. So slightly different aspect ratio uh, as far as like thickness. The Razer Blade is a substantially more powerful device, but it's pretty similar in how thin it is. But the Alienware also is not drastically, I mean, it's a little bigger, but not drastically bigger as far as thickness goes, but physical size, it's about the same difference, right? You know, that whole back wing there is all Alienware, right? But that is for ventilation purposes and it does make the laptop bigger, but it does work pretty good. Ports wise, the Dell only has Thunderbolt 4 ports, nothing else. Well, I guess it's a headphone jack port, but no actual relevant ports. When it comes to fingerprints, obviously the Razer is gonna be by far the worst with the black design. The Razer has a good selection of ports. The Alienware, what I like it has is its own mini display port. The Razer has a better HDMI than this, but I'd rather have DisplayPort. You can do Thunderbolt to DisplayPort, but the cables can get wonky there. It's pretty easy to find a straight mini DisplayPort to regular DisplayPort, but if you get USB-C to DisplayPort, sometimes they don't work quite right. As far as aesthetics, it's really kind of personal opinion. Obviously, this is the cleanest, most professional looking one. The X17 is the most gamery, wild looking one, and the Razer Blade I like. It looks pretty cool. I always see when people on YouTube talk about how some laptops are more professional looking than others, and they say that the Legion or this wouldn't look out of place. If you went to a business meeting and they're out of their mind, I am a businessman. I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman. A very important businessman. And you're only gonna see like ThinkPads, maybe a MacBook. If someone walked in with a Razor, everyone would be like, what the hell is that? How'd you get a gaming laptop in here? And no one's gonna have an X17 in a business meeting or a Legion. Generally a business is gonna have consistent laptops. So it's gonna be all Dell or all HP or all Lenovo so that Unless you're a programmer, maybe you can just pick your own laptop or they don't have any rules, but standard business folk, it's very rare. I've never seen, I've been a businessman for 20 years, and I've never seen someone walk into a business meeting with a razor and bleed. So I would say looks are more relevant for personal preference. I personally do like how the razor blade look. It looks pretty cool. I'd rather this should be all black, like, or just do something like this with the razor logo. Cause you don't even see it lighting up. The Alienware has the Alienware head that also lights up, but again, you don't see the back of the laptop very often. So there's really no reason, I maybe mean, you're in a room full of people gaming. And even then, when I was in a room full of gaming with my brother-in-law and my son playing games, he found the Tron ring to be kind of annoying. I mean, it's cool looking, but when you're trying to play in a dark room gaming with people, it's super bright. So there you can see the backs of these guys, right? Obviously, even though the Dell is 16 by 10, the tallest is still gonna be the Alienware and then the Razer Blade and then of course the Dell. Both the Alienware and the Razer are 16 by nine screens, which I really like. Some people will complain, but you see how the height 
on the Alienware. I like this a lot, right? So this little space we have here, that's pretty cool. The Razer has a little bit of space. The Dell is by far the worst. You know, people say it has no bezel, which it doesn't. I mean, almost there's no bezel, but you're right on the bottom here. So if you're sitting with it like a laptop, you have to look down, which I don't like. I mean, it's not a huge difference here. It's a little bit taller. It's a lot better here, but why would you want your screen lower? You want the screen higher, of course. This one's a touch screen. So yeah, like if I wanted to touch the start menu, I got to literally touch this part of the laptop, which you don't want to do. I don't use touch screen anyhow, so it's fine. As far as the trackpad, the Alienware is by far the smallest than the Razer, and then by far the biggest would be the Dell XPS 9710. Keyboard wise, once again, it's the opposite. Worst keyboard, Dell, slightly better keyboard, Razer, and by far the best keyboard, I would say in just about any laptop I've ever used, is the Alienware. This is the one with the Cherry MX Mechanical. I used to not like Razer keyboards. They did make them slightly bigger this generation. That's why I first got the Dell. I liked it better than my previous Razer, but now I think I like the Razer better than the Dell. The Dell, I thought I liked it at first. I even said as much in my first video on it, but I absolutely hate it now. I don't want any part of typing on that. It's the worst part of that laptop by far. All right, so now let's see. You can tell the Razer is obviously taller there. And then you can't quite get back to back because, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I banged that up and didn't make any scuff marks on either one of them. Okay, so there's a slight. Let me see. Is that a real mark or is that just. So yeah, well, I have one video. I just made a slight mark on the Dell with the razor blade. And the razor doesn't show any marks. I mean, the Dell's really hard to tell. You wouldn't notice that unless I pointed it out. But no mark whatsoever on the razor blade, which is nice. That's okay! And then we go back to back, of course. You can tell the deck and everything is bigger on the Alienware. So once again, personal preference. I do like the size of the Alienware X17. This was the gaming laptop I used personally for since I had it and reaffirmed my faith that you could use a laptop as a desktop replacement. I tried with the Dell and it worked pretty good, but I need a little more power. This gave me plenty. And of course the Razer Blade's great as well. The Alienware is so powerful. It's almost more powerful than the newer Razer. So the newer Alienware probably is more powerful, but there's other things besides just raw power that I do like better about the Razer Blade. That's okay! Here we are recording on the Razer Blade itself. I'm well past my return window. At this point, this is no longer an unboxing, a first look at a laptop. The Razer Blade 17 is my daily driver at this point. So far, it's been pretty great. And if we take a look at my Synapse, you can see I've added quite a few devices to my Razer lineup. So I'm clearly going all in. Uh, it's currently October 28th. I'll put the purchase date on the screen here. I don't remember that off the top of my head. While I do primarily use it docked, I have traveled with the Razer Blade 17. I used it at my brother-in-law's house for a game night and it was awesome. Recently, I took a trip to St. Louis. I used it for gaming and just regular computer stuff in the hotel itself. For me, it, the device is plenty portable and it's still very powerful. And I love having an SD card slot directly on the Razer Blade itself. I will say I still don't love the actual Razer Blade keyboard. My Razer Black Widow V3 full-size keyboard, I absolutely love. But as far as just using the Razer Blade itself as a laptop and typing directly on it, I would say it's passable at best. It's better than the previous incarnation, but it's nowhere near as good as the ThinkPad and a far cry from the king of laptop keyboards, the Alienware X17. Let's take a look at some of the specs of my device. Let's take a crack open task manager here. Looking at the CPU, you can say we have the 12th gen Intel Core i9-12900H. For the memory, we have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory running at 4,800 megahertz. Two of two slots used. So if I want to upgrade to 64 gigabytes, I will need to replace both sticks. So far, 32 gigabytes are perfectly fine for me. Looking at the C drive, what came and saw was a Samsung SSD with one terabyte of storage. There is a second slot available and I will be adding a two terabyte SN850X to my Razer Blade. We do have a gigabit ethernet port. I'm currently using ethernet via the Razer Thunderbolt 4 dock, but there is an ethernet port directly on the laptop itself. It's just more convenient to use it with a dock. While I'm currently not using the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi has been perfectly fine and it does have a Wi-Fi 6E card in here. so. That's pretty good. The internal GPU is the Intel Iris Xe graphics, but of course we generally just use the discrete graphics, which is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti. If we look at the NVIDIA control panel, we can see the maximum graphics power is 175 watts. There is another interesting piece to show here. I will make a separate video to dive into this a bit more, maybe even with Mash IT. Hi. 
This is David Mash. Shut the fuck up! Not now, Dave, later. You bitch. If you look at Synapse, you can see we are set to NVIDIA Optimus as opposed to dedicated GPU mode. However, since I'm docked, I'm still using this with my 38 inch Alienware monitor, and you can see the Thunderbolt out is hooked directly to the 3080 Ti. We can even double check that if we look at the display settings. Look at the advanced display. You can see the internal display, of course, is set to you know 4k 144 hertz and we look at my external display is the dell alienware you can tell it's connected directly to the nvidia geforce 3080 ti even if we look at the properties it pops up right there at the 3080 ti so pretty good what this means is if i want to undock it and take it somewhere i can still be in optimus mode and have the better battery life but when i dock it it'll go right back to me in full power on the 3080 ti which is nice. So while we're here, let's take a look at Synapse. I used to think Synapse was terrible, and then I tried Alienware Command Center, and I realized Synapse isn't that bad. There's a handful of other software available. I use Razer Central, Razer Cortex, Razer Axon, and of course, Razer Synapse. Razer also sent me an email for like a virtual ring light, which I thought was kind of silly. I mean, it's a good in concept, I guess, but it's no use for me. Razer Central is a good way to check for updates, which is nice. You can just check to update all your individual products. So I do like that. And then you can click on each one of these to go to the app you want to go to. I already have Synapse open, so let's just take a look. On the main page of Synapse, you can see all the devices you currently have connected. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do here. We'll get into that in probably another video. But mainly, we'll look at the system itself. I say you can click here in the Razer Blade or click on System. They'll both do the same thing. This takes me to the Razer Blade setup. If I go back to the main page and click on the Razer Blade, it takes me to the same spot. You can click on Accessory to go to either one of these, and then Mouse and Keyboard get their own individual settings so on this page you can change a lot of stuff i don't use any of these features i don't change any of this on the laptop one so you can set it to gaming mode so you can disable these again but i don't game like that i use the razor wolverine controller i don't use mouse and keyboard like some kind of neanderthal obviously I'm a pro, so I use the controller. Now you can set the function keys or multimedia keys to primary so if you wanted to use you know fn plus the buttons to make it volume or whatnot. Again, I use my primary dock, so I don't mess with that. And there's also like a delete key in there that I didn't like, so I left it on the FN section instead of the multimedia ones. And if you want to change trackpad properties, of course, you can just go to window settings. Lighting is where a lot of the cool stuff happens, right? You can change the brightness of the keys. You can set the logo on the back to be static or breathing. You know, undo breathing while I'm plugged in. And then if it's on battery, you can have it just be off which is probably more logical and you can turn them. So I like that you had different settings from plugged in versus battery. I very much like this, this one's plugged in or on battery. You can have the lighting turn itself off. As previously mentioned, the Alienware software that sucks. I don't think you can do that. I could never get it, like I would turn everything off. Unless you shut the device down, the keyboard lights would just be going wild. This one, the display comes off, then it should shut off the associated lighting, you know, for the razor blade itself, which is nice. And then like the fact you can change it if it's on battery or plugged in, you can make the settings or if you want both to be the same, you just click on this and it'll do the same thing no matter what. So that's very nice. Quick effects here, so you can change it for all the various lighting methods. So you have a lot of options here, right out the box. If you wanna to go to Chroma Studio, you can go in here and you can really set up all kinds of fancy stuff. Like you can see, I can move all my things around. Like here's my razor blade, here's my laptop stand, here's my charging pad, here's my keyboard, here's my dock and mouse. So that's a lot more complicated, we'll get into that another time, but you know, quick and easy you can go in here and just change this to whatever you want to all these options it's interesting though all these options are not available on all the products so you can see all the ones that are available here on the razor blade itself but if i go to my accessory the laptop stand i only have a small subset of those options but if you go into studio i can then make everything like i have them set to go on fire so fire is not an option for the laptop stand it is an option on the blade keyboards fire is something you can do but if i go to the studio and tie them all together i can use fire and fire will work just fine on the laptop stand and all these other devices so it's interesting i don't know why it does that it's very odd you would think that if it can do fire in studio you can add it here but either way that's we're getting away from the point here but the fact is you get all the goodness in here like this is pretty much all your features available in the quick settings here which and not every razor device is the same some of them don't have all those options right 
and then performance modes, which is very nice. You can do FN plus P to change them, or you can just do it on here. Someone's plugged in. I'm pretty sure it came this way with custom with CPU on medium and GPU on high. And I think I've left it this way the entire time. I didn't try if you just go to balanced, it will move it around. If you go to silent, um, that's just if you want to be quiet. I don't care about that. But customs where I've kind of left it at, you notice the fan every once in a while, but it hasn't bothered me anyhow. And I play it, it seems fun. So on battery, I just leave it on balance, but I don't, I don't really play games on battery. And here's where you can change it from Optimus to dedicated GPU, which is nice because on the Alienware X17R1, you had to change that in the BIOS, which is super annoying. So here you can change it. You will have to reboot it. If I click here, it'll make me reboot it to imply it, but at least you can easily click it, turn it on. Like if I go to my brother-in-law's house to have a game night, I'll have to click on here to turn it on. But while I'm docked, I'll leave it at Optimus and then the external display will be managed by whatever port is connected to. And then mine is of course going through the Razer Blade Thunderbolt dock and the Thunderbolt directly works just fine to get my full, like I said, I can go here and get all my settings. So using the Razer Blade 3080 Ti, I can power 38 inch, 3840 by 1600, 144 hertz, 38 inch monitor and it works great. All right, so back to Synapse, you know, there's a lot more you can do, but that's about all we can show you. That's all the basic functionality of Synapse you need to get by. It also has Razer Cortex. This will have your games in here, and then when you launch it, it says it'll do a bunch of stuff like killing RAM and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if it actually does anything, all these game booster functions and stuff, so I don't know. It pops up when you start a game, and when the game's over, it gives you a bonkers stats. Like, it tells me I have, like, 3,000 FPS in Rumbleverse, which obviously doesn't make any sense. But my games all run fine, so I guess I'll leave it running. The one cool thing here is that if you go to System Booster, I don't use any of this stuff, but if you go to my rig, it will tell you all the stats and all your stuff, which is pretty nice. You can see like some detailed stuff on what you have here. Like here, I can see I have the two 16 gigabyte sticks of RAM. I'll tell you the Civic model here. I'll tell you which slot they're in. Same thing with the hard disk. It tells me I have a Samsung. It tells you your firmware graphics card you can see a little more detail so and even with the monitor it tells me the dell's plugged in here and it tells me the firmware of the monitor which is pretty nice i don't know how it knows that but it does same thing with keyboard i can see the razor blade or the black widow both of them in here mice it tells me the chroma stand i don't know why it shows that but the basilisk v3 which i'm using audio it tells me everything i have plugged in here of course and then even all this other stuff bluetooth stuff and even uh camera shows the integrated hour that's the windows hello logic brio shows up here in audio you know it's just neat you can see all this stuff in here in case you had a question about it i uh, even shows my road microphone that i'm recording this on this razor accent software is pretty new it just came out at razor 2022 it gives you cooler wallpapers you got a lot of options to choose from here. Like if you want to do, I want to apply that. Now we have this raining wallpaper and it'll make the chroma stuff match it. But I don't know if that affects performance or not, but I don't know. So sometimes it's distracting, sometimes it's cool. But for now, I'm going to turn it off. I do like this wallpaper here. So even though it is clearly a laptop, I use it mostly docked as a desktop replacement. I believe it's more than powerful enough. Let's take a look at some early benchmarks. I'll do a deeper dive later on to look at all the benchmarks, but for now, these are the ones that I ran using the Razer Blade just as a laptop with the internal Razer Blade display. Our time spy score was 12,341. Fire Strike was 24,452. Geekbench clocked in at 1813 for single core, 9191 for multi core, and 142, 924 for the Geekbench compute score. The compute score measures more of the GPU, of course. I tested the Samsung SSD that came installed with the Razer Blade in Crystal Disk Mark. It scored an excellent 6,687 for the read speed and 4941 for the Right speed. For me, I've mostly gamed on Rogue Company or Rumbleverse, but I ran some benchmarks in other AAA games and we averaged 96 FPS at 4K and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Far Cry 6 at 4K had an average FPS of 66 and Red Dead Redemption averaged 54 FPS at 4K. Anyhow, that's enough. This was just meant to be the first look or an unboxing and a spiraled on. So we're way beyond at this point. So if you don't care about the price, you want a cool looking, powerful laptop, I can't imagine you'd be disappointed in this device. At this point, this is the most powerful laptop Razer has ever made. And of course, next year, they will probably make a better one. But for now, for me, I like the Razer ecosystem and I'm very happy with my purchase.
All right, that's it. If you're still watching, and I hope you are, of course, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? At the time of this recording, I'm currently at 15.6 thousand subscribers. Obviously, we're looking to grow that. For the most part, this channel is fully self-funded. I do get some items for free, but all the big ticket items, like the Alienware desktop or the Alienware laptop or this razor blade, I buy myself. And of course, these things are cheap. On top of that, there's other expenses, camera equipment. I have to pay this piece of the best editor in the world all right that's it anyhow stay tuned there will be a lot of razor stuff coming to the channel very soon all right that's it thanks for checking me out